good day everyone my name is Mark Joseph Castillo the leader of the group 3 with the members Miss Mary Joy Bibera Miss Honey Joy Bungot Miss Mariel Bustos and Miss Hazel Cabrera for today's video lecture we will discuss the first topic basic strategies for developing literacy with us with its subtopics and for the second topic we have strategies for the development of emerging literacy skills and teaching resources with subtopics basic strategies for developing literacy what is literacy strategy literacy strategies are techniques that teachers use to help students improve their reading skills. Research on reading indicates that good readers use a variety of strategies to make sense of what they read. This is often referred to as making meaning or literacy strategies. The same research has shown that effective readers use specific strategies when reading that show they understand or comprehend what they're reading. They target different skill sets and areas of knowledge that involve reading such as vocabulary, spelling, ability, comprehension, critical analysis, and language articulation people also ask what are the basic strategies for developing literacy six such strategies are making connections visualizing inferring questioning determining importance and synthesizing it is important to know and understand the basic strategies for developing literacy to help students that can read effectively fail to grasp important concepts score poorly on tests and ultimately fail to meet educational milestones those literacy skills allow students to see out information, explore subjects in depth, and gain a deeper understanding of the world around them. It is also very important to use strategies and teaching literacy to ensure that students can clearly articulate their learning goals, specifically in literacy, through having a clear vision of the expectations where they are at and where they need to go next in their learning. To elaborate those uh, subtopics of basic strategies for developing literacy, the next presenter will be Ms. Bongot. Hello everyone, again I am Honey Joy B. Bungot. So for today's hour, we're going to talk first about the three subtopics of basic strategy for developing literacy. First, we have making connections, visualizing, and inferring. So let's talk first about making connections. Making connections is a reading comprehension strategy that helps students find meaning in a text by connecting it to their background knowledge. It means that this process allows students to relate what they read, see, do, and experience to themselves, or to the world around them, or to the other things they have read, seen, or experienced previously. They relate the previous experience about themselves to the other experience which has happened previously. So for example, when you put yourself in the story and think about how would you react and how would you reacted when you were in similar situations? So you are making connections about what you think would happen when you're experiencing the same situations. Making connections also involves a process of connecting prior knowledge to new knowledge and experiences. It is particularly important for English language learners who need to connect learning to their experience. 
When we said making connections, it is not only for the experience in life, but it could be learnings about things and objects which is you learn to understand before. For example, you understand of the word round help you understand and make connections to several objects including the moon or a ball. So now, you are thinking of a word and connecting this to the things you learned to the past. This is just another way to describe learning either in a things or in a word related to each other. So let's proceed to the three strategies of making connections. We have text-to-self connection, text-to-text -text connection, and text-to-world connections. When we said text-to-self connection, it is reminding children of something that happened in their own lives. So it is when children are able to have a connection to her or his self about something happened in their lives. Or when a children has experienced before that can relate to those things happened previously. Next, we have text-to-text -text connection. It is when a book reminds them of another they have read. It is something that a word or a sentence helps children to remind them of another they have read before. And now, it builds connections between before and after. Lastly, we have text-to-world connection. When the text reminds them of something they have seen in the world at large. So it is when they read a statement that helps them to remember something they have seen in a world before. So now, let's proceed to the second subtopics, which is the visualizing. Visualizing is the reading strategy that helps your student create a picture in their head of what they are reading. It can help with our reading comprehension, make you feel more connected to the material, and create more personal experience. It is the ability to create mental pictures in our mind based on the text we read or words we hear. It also helps us to improve reading comprehension because we create visualizing and by that we can easily understand things that we are reading. Visualizing also help us to formulate pictures in our mind based on the activity in a story. So as if your students are making videos or movies in their heads, all built from their background knowledge, their imaginations, and the context of the text. For example, you ask students to draw a clown, a beach scene, or a house. Or when you use the words in a story or book to make a picture in your mind, you are visualizing. So it is important to do visualization because it enhances attention because it keeps the audience focused on the subject matter. And when students visualize context of a lesson that they are reading, comprehension increases dramatically. For our third subtopics, we have inferring. Inferring is a comprehension strategy that helps students understand information that is not always completely described in a text. Student at this stage makes new description or meaning of the text. For example, the author may provide clues that the reader can use to understand the topic, setting, characters, or event. Students are able to make their own inferences. The teacher should observe students to make sure students are making inferences and not facts based on the text read. In this example, readers use prior knowledge to draw conclusions in a text stated. He or she implies conclusion by reasoning from evidence. Inferring also is when they are making meaning of the text, they are adding pieces that are not explicitly there, often sharing personal opinions and forming interpretations. So you are putting new ideas, opinion, and knowledge about the text you read. Inferring also requires readers to use prior knowledge and the information stated in a text to draw conclusions. When you are doing inference, your ideas builds a lot. It can help you to build knowledge, set important purposes for reading. Inferring requires careful reading of a text in order readers gather clues about what the author is trying to say. As for conclusions, Making inferences is one of the most important reading skills. It's crucial not only because it helps kids comprehend text, but it is okay aspects of many other reading strategies, like determining character traits, cause and effects, using context, clues, and more. That ends for my topic. For the next topic, this will be discussed by Ms. Bustos. Good day everyone, I'm Mariel J. Busto, support today I'm gonna tackle the subtopics of strategies for developing literacy. So strategies for developing literacy has six subtopics and they are making connection, visualizing, inferring, 
questioning, determining importance and lastly is synthesizing. But for today, I'm going to discuss the three subtopics of strategies for developing the TRC and they are the questioning, determining importance, and synthesizing. So the first thing that I'm going to discuss is questioning. So what is questioning? Questioning is an ability to formulate a response to a question about situation and ideas. It is also showing an interest to learning new things. Questioning is a major form of human thought and interpersonal communication. So, for example, are you okay? The answer is yes or no. So, the question usually begins with what, why, and how. An open question asks respondents for his or her opinions, knowledge, or feelings. So, questioning is very important technique because it helps stimulate learning and develop the potential of the students to think. Also, it is one of the ways of the teachers to help the students to develop their knowledge to be more effectively. So, the next subtopics that I'm going to discuss is determining importance. So, what is determining importance? Determining importance is the strategy that the readers use to distinguish between what information in the text is the most important. Also, it helps and teach students to pay attention to the problem and solution in the text they read. So, we determine importance by overviewing, skimming and scanning text, highlighting, Sorting important information, noticing text, features, titles, headings, and captions. So in short, determining importance means that the reader can distinguish important information from the text. And by that, they can gather more and bigger information and ideas. So, the last subtopics that I'm going to discuss is synthesizing. So, what is synthesizing? Synthesizing means to require the reader to take that summary or partial retelling and add it in their opinions or their thoughts to generate and gather new and bigger ideas. So, summarizing is making connection and putting it together to create new ideas. Instead of summarizing the points of each source, in turn, you put all together the ideas and findings of multiple sources to get or make overall points. This involves looking the similarities and differences between your sources. So, there are the things you need to do before synthesizing. First is to analyze each source separately. Next is to determine the value and reliability of each source. Last is to look for the connection and relationship among the different sources. Thank you, Ma'am Bustos. Now, let's move on to the strategies for the development of emergent literacy skills and teaching resources. But before we proceed to our next topic, let us first define the emergent literacy coming from Clay, Tell, and Salisbury. Marie Clay in 1996 was the first one who used the term emergent literacy. Emergent literacy is based on an assumption that a child acquires some knowledge about language, reading, and writing even before attending any formal education. Till in 1982, View literacy as the result of children's involvement in reading activities facilitated by literate adults. All children who come to school already have certain experiences and interests in learning. Thus, refers to competencies and literacy skills in early childhood. Solsby in 1991 defines literacy as the reading and writing behavior of young children that proceed and develop into conventional literacy. Out of those ideas, we come up to this definition of emergent literacy. Emergent literacy is a term that is used to explain a child's knowledge of reading and writing skills before they learn how to read and write words. It signals a belief that in literate society, young children even 1 and 2 years old are in the process of becoming literate. Examples of emergent literacy activities includes engaging in short storybook reading, pretending to write or draw, incorporating literacy themes into plays, and engaging in oral wordplay such as rhyming, 
Short storybook reading is arguably the most common emergent activity for many children. Next is teaching resources. Resources that is focused on ways to support teaching and learning. There are different strategies for the development of emergent literacy skills, starting with picture and objects. Pictures, paintings, and other visual constitute the most effective, most plentiful, and least expensive teaching medium. The context of the pictures must be consistent of age and maturity of the children. So the role of the teacher, the teacher must prepare pupil for learning how to read, the teacher must initiate activities using real concrete objects such as alphabet books, toys, pictures books, etc. Also, teacher imparts acquisition by child of a basic sight vocabulary using pictures, configuration, actions, and context clause. So, the advantages of this strategy is that it helps to predict Check and confirm the meaning of words. Another is noticing and using pictures details to support meaning. One of the examples can teacher use using this strategy is that the teacher will present an actual flower to confirm the learning of the learners about the certain flower. The next topic will be discuss Mam Cabridas. Mam. Dahil wala ngayon si Mam Cabridas, ako muna ang papalit sa kanya. The second strategy that I'm going to discuss is letters and words. Recognizing letters is a fundamental part of learning. It can help children in learning letters and sounds and also in recognizing words. It is also a big step for them in learning and recognizing words. Because if they can already recognize words, then they can now be able to construct sentences that will help them in writing and reading. Some important strategies that can use in teaching them are certain activities to differentiate letters shape and fluency practice and letter identification. Teach them the letter of their name. Use visuals such as alphabet cards. Next is sound. Children start to develop this decoding ability in early childhood. The ability to decode words is strongly reliant on children having strong phono phonological awareness skills who are a gateway into later sound knowledge. Early phonics knowledge is the key to starting to decode written words. Children can use phonics knowledge to sound out words. Sounds are essential for a child children to become a successful readers and speller or writers in early year of schooling and beyond. Introduction to sounds through engaging learning experiences can start from the ages three and four. Read aloud experiences. Reading aloud to young children has been advocated as a natural device for promoting oral language development and initiating monolingual children into literacy. Read stories to children out loud. Students are able to identify behaviors associated with effective listening. Social communication about the book afterwards helps promote language learning and development. Reading a variety of texts out loud, students can use their acquisitiveness to ask questions and be problem solvers by predicting solutions. As a recap, the following are strategies that can be employed for the development of emergent literacy skills. Pictures and, and objects, letters and words, sound, and read aloud experiences. That would be all for the video lecture. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching.